Hello Huskies, Preston Dunyon here with your Friday Dogcast, January 21st, 2022, and we have got a boring day on tap, as you've probably already noticed. Now, take a look at the clouds here. This is some low level clouds moving through the region, kind of north to south, and they're impacting us in terms of just, well, blocking out the sun from really fully shining. I guess that's kind of how it goes though. We're here in late January. You can't expect much, but a little bit of sunshine. You could never have the whole thing, right? Now, I want you to pay attention to one thing. You see the motion of these clouds is kind of in this clockwise flow, and that means something pretty important. And we'll look at that on a larger scale here over the Pacific, right? Again, you see that clockwise flow of these clouds around that blank space out in the ocean. What does that mean? A system of high pressure, and that high pressure is continuing to move into our region over the next couple days here, and that's going to set up shop and really impact our weather in a mundane but significant way. So that clockwise flow around the high pressure, you notice that that is going to be the tail of our weather for the next couple days. Before we get into the next couple days though, I wanna take a look at today. High of 48, low of 38, pretty standard stuff for January 21st, especially looking at those averages. And then of course, we got some great historic examples of severe differences from that normal. 1962, how about it? 60 years ago today, we were down in the low teens. Here we are in the upper 40s and you know what? Comparatively, I am just fine with that. Now take a look at the skycast for tomorrow. These are some numbers you're gonna to wanna to get used to because we'll be seeing that a lot in the next couple slides here. Uh, but 46 degrees tomorrow, a little bit below average, and then we'll have that foggy start thanks to those uh, high pressure conditions really keeping any moisture that wants to evaporate out of our soggy soil from getting any further than low to the surface. So especially close to the water, you're going to see fog on the ground, really starting our day off a little gray, a little murky, but then again, the sun is gonna make its appearance. It will be out, you know, poking between the clouds and we will have some decent gusts tomorrow, but I wanna talk a little bit more about that because wind is our key factor in getting rid of high pressure and that stagnant air and that fog, right? It doesn't get rid of the pressure, but it rids of the, gets rid of those impacts, excuse me. So here we are taking a look at the wind gusts over the next 24 hours, ending at about 2.30 tomorrow afternoon. And look at that, these numbers are really low. Gusts of eight miles in Seattle, Bremerton, nine in Olympia, even out on the coast, only 13 miles per hour as the peak gusts in Hoquiam. So the numbers here are really low. That's not enough wind to really carry air out of the region and get rid of that fog and that moisture and that stagnant sitting air that's under this high pressure lid sitting over the region. So I want you to believe me here when I say this is not an error, but in fact, our actual seven day forecast for the next seven days. And uh, I'll get out of the way here so you can see Thursday, but walking back, 46 are high pretty much every single day here. Uh, we'll get a little warmer towards the end of the week when we see maybe another system getting in. But again, these are some slightly below average temperatures and those temperatures overnight will get low because yes, we have a limited amount of clouds, but those low clouds and that high pressure are gonna block out the sunlight from really getting to the surface. You know, in, in tandem, they'll do that job. They're gonna shut down our ability to absorb some of that winter sunshine and we'll stay a little bit below average during the day, chilly at night, and that is what we've got coming up here in Seattle. But because we're so boring and sitting at 46 every single day, I wanna talk about some other interesting conditions around the country right now. How about this? Take a look at uh, Southern Texas there, you know, south of Houston on the northern border of Mexico in Monterey. I heard some conditions today, freezing rain in Northern Mexico. Sounds like a good band name to me, but really uh, kind of severe conditions you wouldn't typically see in that region. You look out all the way here down in Miami, South Florida is enjoying some pretty toasty conditions. And then way up in the Northeast, they are still bitter cold there. You see it Boston, New York, and up into Canada and Montreal and Toronto, frigid conditions. So most of the country really kind of in this low area. You see a lot of the Midwest kind of in the same boat as us in that kind of teal light blue conditions set up. And then over the Midwest and the Great Lakes, a little bit colder than that. So how long do we have to wait till we have interesting conditions here in Seattle? Not too terribly long, but enjoy this week of 46 on repeat.